we do have a jam packed. We got 30 seminars that we got. And you're doing two of those seminars, one on Friday afternoon and one Sunday morning. Correct. And what what's the first one that, that uh, they can look into? And tell us a little bit about what that class is going to entail to try and get people to come in that class. Well, I think this is a this is a great place to talk about that because I'm sure you've heard it from a lot of shop owners go, I can't afford. I can't afford to take the time. I can't afford the cost of going there. So the class I'm doing, I think you said it was Friday. It's yep. called Profit Structuring and Business Analysis. So it's kind of interesting. If you follow any of the Facebook groups for auto repair or any of the forums, very common question is how much should I charge per hour? How much should I pay my technicians? Uh, what should that, my that's, shop rate be? I'll call, the, right. I'll call it down the street and see what theirs is. We, we call that setting your hourly rate by WAG, wild ass <laughs> guess. And what we're going to talk about here is, first of all, the tools that you have, which is a P&L. We're going to teach you how to read it properly. And to be honest with you, about 98% of all the P&Ls that I look at are wrong, drastically wrong. So I'm going to show you why they're wrong and how to prevent you from making really poor financial decisions. I'll share with you an example. I have a shop. He calls me up and says, hey, Malin, I just want to let you know my net profit for the last 10 months on average per month is $12,000. And I said, that's great. 12 grand a month profit, net profit. And he goes, yeah, but I got a question for you. And I said, okay. He goes, if I made $12,000 for 10 months profit, shouldn't I have $120,000 in the bank? And I said, well, in theory, yes. He goes, well, I don't, and I don't understand why. So I actually went to this guy's shop and sat down because he couldn't answer my questions. And I went through his checkbook and, and I found $10,000 of bills he was paying that weren't being accounted for on his P&L because his accountant was following what we call GAP, generally accepted accounting principles, right? It's their rules for accounting. So he was making decisions thinking he was making $12,000 a month when what he was making was $2,000 a month. So when I explained to him, I said, do you have 20 grand in the bank? He goes, I do. I said, so we need to fix your P&L to where it gives you factual information. But right. he, didn't, he didn't know because he didn't study the P&L and he didn't understand what GAP was. So we're going to talk about GAP. We're going to talk about how the P&L is wrong. Um, part of the workbook is actually going to be a sample P&L with explanations of what goes in categories because stuff gets miscategorized all the time. And then we're going to talk about, and I'll actually show them how to set their hourly rate based on their cost of doing business. You know, people talk about it, you know, the nut. How much does it cost you every day to keep your door open? So let, let's let say that it costs you $20,000 to pay all your bills. That's not technician wages, and that's not parts purchases. Yeah, because that goes up the cost of goods. That comes off the gross. Well, if, if the P&L is done right. But I see stuff in cost of goods that doesn't belong there. But here's the mistake people make is they say, well, if I need 20 grand to stay open, and I'm doing 30 grand, I should have $10,000, right? No, because it's really, you need to have $20,000 in gross profit after you paid your technicians, your cost of goods sold. So if that's not right, everything else after that's wrong. So we're gonna, we're gonna spend a lot of time on that. Then I'll show you how to do all the math. And then we're gonna talk about, you, I, I call gross sales the liar's number. Right. When you get a bunch of shop owners together, everybody asks, well, hey, Brett, what'd you do in gross sales? And you could say anything you want because you can't necessarily don't have to prove it. Right. <laughs> You're right. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of the bragging number. I caught the fish that was this big. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're going to talk about gross profit, what it is, why it's so important to us. We're going to talk about why the PL is right. And then we're going to talk about what it costs you to keep your shop open how many hours you have the bill, what your hourly rate needs to be. And then, of course, we're going to get to the really important number that nobody talks about, and that's your effective or true labor rate. So if you charge $200 an hour and you're 50% productive, you're only charging $100 an hour. Right? You're right. Yep. 
I'm and still if, trying to get that effective labor rate to, to match. Right. So we're, we're going to talk about why that is. And let's say that we do all the math and it says your hourly rate needs to be $120 an hour. You're charging $200 an hour. So you think I'm good, right? But your effective labor rate's 100. So every hour you bill, you're actually losing $20. And that's yep. why there's no net profit. So we're gonna we're gonna go through that whole well how the P and L is how it works, what's important about it. Then we're gonna talk about how to actually set your hourly rate. And if anybody wants to bring their P and L, for yeah, you wanted three loss three months statements to bring so they have something a, factual numbers to help. Right, a minimum of three months, three, six, nine, twelve, whatever they're comfortable with, and they don't need to share their numbers with anybody else in class. The workbook that I'm bringing has a little fill in the blank. So what's on the screen that they're gonna see? has a blank so they can write their numbers in. It has all the math right there, but even better. And this is, this is the bonus for coming to the event. I will give you the spreadsheet that I use to do all of these calculations. That's great. That's a perk. So, so everybody that's there, all I ask you to do is send me your email address, send me an email and I'll re just reply to that email and you'll get the spreadsheet. Plus because it's tools, because I'm supporting the association, you fill that worksheet out, the workbook out, you send it to me. I'll give you one hour of my time on the phone to go over that worksheet with you and make sure you did it right and explain all the numbers that you may not understand. Now, that, that's a big bonus. It is a bonus because uh, getting that from a coach or anybody is not cheap. No. And I, I'm not, you know, Mr. Numbers. I struggled with that. It took me a long time to get good at numbers. So I understand. The spreadsheet seems overwhelming, but it's not really. If you just plug the numbers in right, it does all the math for you. And I'll be more than happy to make sure you do things right. Because I get this phone call all the time. Hey, Malin, something's wrong with your spreadsheet. It says I should only be charging $40 an hour. And I'm charging $80 an hour. And I still don't have any money. What's your effective labor rate? $30 an hour. Yeah, because so they don't yeah, understand yeah. Yep. the correlation between all the numbers. And again, the PLs are wrong usually. So we got to get stuff in the right spots and fully understand your numbers. So that's that's the power of that class.